This episode is from our brewing playlist and is Season 03, Episode 03. It is titled, Kegland Wrapped Pill, Installing the Wireless Charging Coil. After they introduced the Wrapped Pill Digital Hydrometer, Kegland created a wireless charging kit for this product. Kegland did an installation tutorial that is essential to watch with instructions on how to install it. However, subsequent releases of the coil weight kits had a slightly different form factor for the foam spacers. This tutorial is intended to be an update to the original Kegland video, which you must watch as a prerequisite to installing one of these coil kits. The link to this is included in the description below. Now I'll turn you over to John Kellis to demonstrate the steps involved to install the coil into the wrapped pill hydrometer. I'm going to recommend the addition of these following items, which is an X-Acto knife, and you'll see here shortly why, and uh, this alsopropyl alcohol, which is for basically just cleaning your fingers off and getting the oils off them if you don't want to use rubber gloves. And I'd prefer not to because the increased dexterity of having just my fingers is better and um, you don't want your oils getting on the the adhesive that's on these foam pads. The first tool I'm going to recommend is that X-Acto knife and the reason for that is if you hold it like that when you're removing the old magnets and push down it gets the adhesive peeled off closer to the plastic end part of the battery holder. Another variation which I would recommend is when you put the new magnets on and centering uh, because your calibration is based upon the magnets so it would be best to have the magnets centered as best you can because then the two-point calibration will be closer to the original calibration. It'll be less hassle to get your calibration right when you have to recalibrate. So what I do is I eyeball new weight and I get one edge of it just slightly over the uh, plus sign on the circuit board. Basically eyeball it so that you get it as close as possible to centered between the two edges of the battery holder. And the other thing that I like to do is get it as low as I can onto the circuit board. So in this case, it's touching the positive connector that's on the circuit board as so. And then you can do the same on the other end. Now we're gonna move on to placing these uh, adhesive foam spacers onto the end of the PCB. And the end we're gonna be working at is the end which goes down into the bottom of the tube. And so that is like that, and that is the positive end. You'll see that these foam spacers are pre-cut. So peel out the solid one. There's a horseshoe shaped one and a solid one. And peel out the solid one and the side, one side will already peel off the uh, insulating layer that um, covers the adhesive, which is fine, because you do want one side that still has the protective film on it and the other side that is stripped so that the adhesive is available. And then again, you're gonna wanna center that as best you can so that means placing it on there and eyeballing the outer edges so that they are about equidistant from the center of the circuit board. And again, I'm eyeballing that from a couple of different directions before I press it hard. And then that way I can manipulate the positioning of it. And when you th think you've got it right about the best you can, that's when you will press down with a steady pressure to just get that adhesive layer as set as well as you can onto the magnet. And then when you've done that, you can now release 
and peel off that protective uh, plastic layer and now your adhesive glue is exposed. Now we're going to remove the horseshoe shaped insert. Again you can see that we will end up with one with the adhesive side exposed and the other one has still got the insulating film on it. Now again we're going to try and get this centered as accurately as we possibly can before we commit by pressing it down and the truncated end of the horseshoe goes and fits up against the bulkhead part of the PCB. Again I'm trying to keep that as loose as possible without committing it. Once you figure you've got it centered as best you can, it's the same process, pressing it down, applying some pressure, and then removing the film and then we are going to move on to placing the coil on. Another aspect that's probably worth mentioning that's not covered in the cake lab video is how the coil form factor runs once you've placed it on the foam and over to where it connects onto the USB-C. So what you want to do is have it arranged so that this cord runs along the edge of the battery holder. So the best thing to do is visualize it first, place the connector into the USB-C, run the cord up the edge about where you want it, hold one side of the cord in with your thumb, and now that's going to give you the orientation of how your coil will fit onto the foam when you bend it over and press it down. Now this is the critical part. If you get it right the first time it's much better and what we're trying to achieve is when we insert the circuit board into the tube the coil has to be centered properly around that dimple that's down at the end point of the tube so that it doesn't get crushed and it aligns properly for charging. It's worth it to take the time to do that in the first place so because we have religiously gotten accurate with the foam pads now we're going to use those as guides in order to get this coil on properly and eyeball it so that it fits more or less evenly but don't press it down really hard until you're ready to commit to the way you have set that coil onto the foam pad because if you need to modify it obviously trying to peel it off if it's really set is going to be more problematic. Now we're going to test the alignment by placing the tube over top of the PCB I find that it works well to rotate the tube a little bit and when you're satisfied that the coil is symmetric in there and it is got the center dimple right in the middle of the coil you can then remove it and now press the coil down again keeping in mind that we cleaned our fingers with alcohol and if you don't have any perhaps a pair of uh, rubber gloves would work and now that we've set that down a little tighter. I am going to put the tube back in, press down on the tube and rotate it just a little bit and eyeball the alignment of coil. And now that I've got that to my satisfaction, I will just now double check, replace the battery when we're ready to commit. One thing I will point out is if you're working on a flat surface, don't set it down flat like that because it'll bend the coil underneath the circuit board and you don't want to do that. So if you want to set it down you might want to find a, a small piece of plywood or something that has a greater thickness than what is sticking off that coil or right, overlapping the circuit board and something like a 3 8 to half inch 
surface of plywood or a piece of wood should do the trick. In my case, I'm going to use a piece of styrofoam underneath the PCB. However, uh, and you can see I just set it down and uh, it's already kind of angled over, so that was a mistake on my part. Uh, one of the things to point out is um, styrofoam can get kind of static in terms of holding a charge, so if you rub it with a uh, fabric sheet, like a fabric softener sheet that you use in a dryer, and then work in a humid environment, and of course I should have mentioned in the beginning, ground yourself if you're handling the PCB so that you also don't get static going across all these points on the circuit board. Then when your styrofoam has been treated and you're satisfied that you don't have any static on it, then you can proceed to place your PCB on top of it. And then I still have to go and ground this one. Um, now that I've ascertained that my little styrofoam block does not have a static charge in it, I've placed the PCB on top of it. And the reason for that, again, is working with the battery which I'm going to insert back into the holder now and I have taken these two small plastic battery point insulators off the end and the next part to be aware of is battery polarity you can see the positive and the negative on the circuit board in the center of the battery holder and this is an 18650 cell and on all these cells you can see on one end there is a nipple and on the other end it's flat. The flat end is the negative side and the part with the center nipple in it that has got more insulation around the edges with that white ring that they use on the EVA 18650 cells, that's the positive. So what I normally would do is it's a tight fit, so I place the negative end in, push it back down toward the end of the battery cable, and then gently apply pressure and slowly work the battery back in. And I don't know if you could see that reflected or not, but a green LED flashed when the battery made connection. Now, I'm gonna hold the, the wire along the edge of the battery holder and I am going to now straighten out the coil a little bit because it got deformed a little bit when I inserted or laid it down on the workbench. Insert that back in, check that nothing's pinched, rotate it a little bit in order to seat the coil against the end of the tube and once that that is achieved. I'm going to eyeball it and rotate it a little bit to make sure that it is fitting around. There is a, an outer diameter ring that surrounds that dimple in the center of the tube and I want to make sure that that coil fits all around that. And here you can see a slightly better magnified view of how that coil should look when you've got it all inserted back into the bottom of the tube. Make sure that the USB-C connector is well seated properly onto the circuit board before you go any further. Then take your charger base and you're going to place the tube of the pill onto it just like you would your cell phone and I'm going to uh, turn it sideways here for purposes so you can see the bottom of the circuit board. Now, if the battery was discharged quite a bit by the time you get this, you may have to wait a while to see the LED indicators flash to give you confirmation that there is a connection between the coil and the circuit board. Now, watch what happens when I make the connection and you'll first see that red light come on and then the green flashing light means that it is ready for you to make the connection with your cell phone in order to start your calibration procedures. Otherwise, 
uh, wait until that red light goes out, which could be 24 hours in order to have the pill fully charged. This next step is optional, but I would recommend considering the use of a food grade lubricant for your O-rings. And so before you screw the cap back on, you can apply your food grade lubricant to the O-rings and then that would make it uh, so that your O-rings last longer in the event should you need to uh, be removing that cap. However, the advantage of the wireless charging system is obviating the need to be putting the cap on and off. However, at some point you may want to be using a colored cap. And when you screw the cap back on, have it so that it covers over and it gets pretty tight at that point. But now when you see that you could just see the edge of the bottom o-ring almost recessed under the proud end of your cap then what you can do is uh, because you don't want that food grade lubricant interfering with any of your fermentation what I do is again take my alcohol and then clean Clean that lubricant off the pill and of course you are going to be um, soaking this pill in your uh, sterilizing solution before you put it into your brew for monitoring anyway but now you've removed that excess lubricant from your o-rings but it's still in there and that should get you off to the races in terms of now being able to make this unit operational and working in the first brew and you will not need to be removing this cap which means then you won't have to do any future calibrations and the last point to make is if you do remove the cap and have to put it back on for any reason Kgland recommends that you take a sharpie and make a mark across both sections of the tube so that when you do replace the cap you can line up those marks from your sharpie and therefore the calibration that you previously registered should maintain that level of accuracy that should be good for subsequent brews. One other thing which I forgot to mention was when you receive the pill unit, if it was the an original one that had the coil and weights pre-installed on my end, the instructions now that follow uh, aren't going to be precisely for your pill in that the registration of the pill is different because you're not plugging it in to the USB-C on the PCB and going from there. You are now placing it on to a charging cradle and that does change the procedure and we will include instructions for that with the units itself.